Adrian, welcome back to Weekend of the Asylum. Uh, is it what visited this for you? Second? Um, yep, this was second year. Second year, fantastic. And you are the steampunk heavy. Yes. You haven't got your sandwich though. No, I need my sandwich. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so you uh, you said just a minute ago before we turn on the camera that you made this for under twenty quid. Yep, the entire Gatling gun was made for under twenty quid. Under twenty quid. Under twenty quid. What's your secret? Um, beg, borrow, steal. Um, <laughs> just basically ask people and say, can I have this, you know, put up a sign in your local shop, post office, whatever. People just donate stuff and you, you can get it. That's fantastic. That's the best way of doing it. And what brings me back to Weekend at the Asylum? Look at it. Do I say any more? <laughs> it's an amazing time. If you are into steampunk, come. Don't even think about it, just go. Um, it's really worth the time. Dr. Cornelius Quack, welcome to Weekend at the Asylum 2013. Hello. Hello, and what brings you back this year? Uh, fun. Fun. Fun, lots of fun. Fantastic. Every time. Wonderful. Never fails to be lots of fun. Wonderful, and what can you tell me about the mental detector? Well, this is my, uh, this is my new invention. It, uh, it detects uh, human brains. Detects human brains. It detects human brains and converts the signals from human brains into a sonic form so I can find out what's going on inside people's heads. In fact, it doesn't have to be people's heads. I have a number of probes and uh, accessories. In fact, I can detect human brains wherever they are. So, uh, <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's a simple, simple principle. It uh, converts brain waves into musical and sometimes non-musical sounds. So, uh, Wonderful. Uh, good afternoon, I'm the Haberdash, and I'd like to introduce Welcome. Captain Edward Welcome. Scythe of the Maelstrom. Uh, to our right is General Apocalypse. General Apocalypse. Greetings, Apocalypse. Pleasure. So can you tell me what you're doing with all these? Well, we're down today uh, keeping an eye on temporal disturbances, essentially. See, a lot of the time people don't think time travel is any big issue. They're not taking into consideration the paradoxes, the issues that come about from it all. And I've got to say, we're not fans. So what we tend to do is monitor it. As you saw earlier, we were checking yourselves to make sure if you've had any temporal disturbances, any spare time. It really has been. Uh, what we generally do, we've got a machine called the chronogulator back at the laboratory. That tends to siphon in all the excess time from all the separate time dimensional rifts that are created. And then we store it all up and deposit it on Saturday afternoons in shoe shops. I do need more time for the boot shopping. Well, I remember when I was a kid, it felt like it was lagging by. Yes, so, yes, uh, yeah, well that's again, that is the issue with time travel, because when I was a kid it was an issue, now I'm actually causing it, I'm writing something about this. Ether refiner here, we're taking it from Shoe shops. Shoe shops. I don't normally buy shoes. Is this your first asylum? Uh, no, this is our fifth asylum. Oh, you're uh, getting the award um, tomorrow, aren't you? No. No? No, I've been up previously as a photographer. I see. So this is our, must be our second or no, it's be our third one is, um, as a steampunk. I see. Prior to that, it was uh, photography. Ah, right, wonderful stuff. So uh, two times as a photographer was enough to convert you? Then? Uh, well, yeah, that and Whitby. So. Ah. Uh, yeah. Been up there on a few occasions. Wonderful. And can you tell me about your hat? Because it is wonderful. How long does it take you to make that? Um, I've given up the amount of hours that have gone into it. Uh, <laughs> countless. Um, yeah, a few failed attempts, but uh, eventually you get there. Uh, yeah. and error. Yeah. It, it is very impressive. So, what brings you to Weekend at the Asylum? Um, the, just the general atmosphere, uh, meeting the, the public, 
is uh, just as important as meeting some of the other friends that we've met over the years, but yeah, just seeing the general public. Yeah. And you're, out, you're actually wearing contact lenses as well, well, um, iris covers, aren't you? No, uh, it's just alcohol. Ah. Uh, <laughs> purely alcohol. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you very, very much. No problem. Enjoy okay. the weekend. You too. Yeah, so, um, would you like to tell the internet your names? Uh, I'm Emily Kane. And I'm Daniel Van Vliet. Yeah? Have you got character names? Uh, no. No, I haven't, actually. I sort of. I have a pseudonym, Daniel Rooksberg. Aha. Uh -huh. What does he do? He is a quiet man who stays in his study all day, analysing dead animals, mostly. <laughs> Hence the uh, bear's head. Hence <laughs> on your hat. <laughs> Fantastic. How long have you two been into steampunk, then? Mm, quite a while now. Yes. Uh, oh, I got into it when um, I went to visit Lauren, and that was years ago. I can't remember. <laughs> Time immemorial, then. Not quite, but seven years, seven ago, years something like that. Yeah. Seven years. Wow. So what keeps you coming back? Um, well, this is only our second asylum, so uh, we came back because we really enjoyed it last year. And it was just so mentally Monty Python crazy <laughs> quotes everywhere and all sorts. We always tell people the asylum is basically if Monty Python made a film set in Victorian times, then this would be it. <laughs> Okay, so weekend at the asylum 2013. Yay! All right. <laughs> what are you doing? Please tell me you have it. Somewhere. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Captain's log, two. Yes, well we don't have many numbers to go off. I am seeing many familiar faces. I'm having flashbacks. Welcome back. Thank you. How's the dinosaur hunting go coming along? Oh, it's, uh, it's been very good. It's, uh, the weather's been quite bad, so uh, the, trying to hunt velociraptors is, uh, they sort of like the dry. They don't like the wet too much, so, uh, so I didn't bag one of those. But uh, pterodactyls were quite good this year. That's good. Uh, yeah. We can the asylum 2013. Hello, Joe Slatter. It's Hello. a pleasure to see you again. How are you doing? Okay, well, can we have a look at your brand new apparatus? Ooh, that is fancy stuff, that, isn't it? Lovely. How long is it taking you to make this? Uh, it's not done in bits and pieces, to be honest. I did the arm first and uh, the hand as well. Oh no, I'll get the table in. Uh, Adam and Sam from last year. Welcome back. Adam and Sam this year? Yes. Can you just... Still here. Still here. Another couple of fantastic costumes. Yes. Look, costumes, they're clothes. He lives and dies in this stuff. <laughs> it's his business. I've seen these dotted around the place. I, well, dotted around on certain people. I was wondering what you could tell me about it. Um, it's a badge produced by uh, Dean Woodman, a.k.a. Major Quicksilver, or Major Q. Um, oh, it's yeah. got the Lincoln Imp on it. So basically the Lincoln Steampunk Society, a.k.a. us locals. Um, we try and have these around, so if people want to know where things are, or they're looking for places, or just interested in things, you know, we, we kind of have the, this is a badge, if 
if you see someone with a Lincoln Imp or this badge on it, it means they're probably local or local to the area and can kind of say, oh, this hotel's here or, oh, this is where the assembly rooms are. So we're just kind of as an unofficial help, really. Oh, weekend of the Asylum 2013. Please introduce yourself. I'm Lady Elsie. I'm one of the, uh, I suppose, co-organisers and inventor of this mad event. Wonderful. How long have you been into steampunk then? Um, probably since um, I saw the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang many years ago and just always wanted to be a bit different or realised I was a bit different. And then people started um, the steampunk art scene and the costume scene and I thought, yeah, that's, that's what I've been thinking. I didn't know what it was called. And then you just found the name and it took off. Yeah, found out what it was called and did it. And being one of the co-organisers, where did the idea come from? Oh. One very bored, wet January night, oh. sitting at home in front of a laptop, thinking about doing an event where lots of creative people could get together and see what it led to. And on Brass Goggles, they've been talking about um, that the UK should have a big event. There was various ideas, various people said they were going to organise it, and nobody did. And the conversation went on for a year, round in circles, until Major Tinker and myself came, saw the norms over the road, and they agreed to hire it to us for a festival. And that was five years ago. Yes, and this is the fifth annual um, Lincoln fifth annual Wicked event. We had 450 first event, and this year we have sold over 2,500 2, different tickets for the different events. Wonderful. Virtually every event has sold out, hasn't it? More or less, yes. More or less, yes. which is which is great. Uh, how long have you known the major? How long have I known the? about 15, 16 years. Only 15, 16 years? Only 15, 16 years, yeah. Ah. All right, well, wonderful. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say to people who are watching, contemplating coming to the asylum? Come to the asylum. The pictures are fantastic, the people are fantastic, the costumes, the gadgets, but you really have to come and experience it for yourself. That's the only way. <laughs> of the times All the hat tie and tinted glasses I've heard he's got no eyes on the air I've heard that he can smell you from a hundred paces They hire him when nothing else works When peelers haven't found you and no one's blowing Maybe for a second I thought I was safe Maybe for a second I got complacent well, I, I keep running The rack that sure is on no matter what, he keeps on coming The rack catcher is on my tail And won't give up the chase The perfect gentleman of the times Stories are just stories and I don't believe them But they say he eats the things that he catches A sooner in his belly than the devil's claws They sent him so of no choice to run I don't believe the stories but I'm running faster Maybe for a second I thought I was safe Maybe for a second I got complacent well, I, I keep running The rack catcher is on my tail No matter he keeps on coming The rack that sure is on my tail And won't give up the chase
complacent. I 